Well, we're back with another episode of your best year ever. 2020 threw us a curveball, but we hit it out of the park. So we're still working on having our best year ever. I'm Judy Best with the XP Realty. Today we're talking about, is it okay to question your faith? Um, the answer is yes, but if you are questioning your faith, um, tell us where you're watching from and, and uh, tell us one of the challenges you're facing right now that makes you question your faith. Um, we want to make you part of the conversation. And if you're watching this um, by replay after we aren't live anymore, drop in a hashtag reflect play in the comments and answer, answer the question still because we sure like to hear from you. I'm Judy Best with the XP Realtor, Realty. We are located out of the 10515 West Markham address for our brokerage but I'm broadcasting live from our offices at 5323 North JFK. I'm glad to have you guys here today with my guest, Tiffany Brown. Um, Tiffany is the Renaissance woman. That's what I'm gonna call you girl, because you have so many talents and gifts for the world and you brought them so fabulously. Um, I met Tiffany and, uh, Kim? No, Bruno Mars. No, what what is what oh. is your friend's name? Oh, Shantae. It was Shantae. Shantae. Yeah, I, yes. I couldn't remember it because I haven't stayed in touch with her much. We yes. we met them at the first Bruno Mars concert. Yeah. And they were sitting in front of us and they they held up their camera to do a, a selfie of the two of them sitting at a Bruno Mars concert. And Roger and I leaned in and photobombed them. Okay. Yes. So that's that's how we met. We became close friends sitting there at that Bruno Mars concert, and we've stayed in touch uh, with Tiffany. Uh, Shantae, I've stayed in touch with her by um, it, on Facebook and online. But um, Tiffany, thank you for being here today. Tiffany is a staff member at St. Mark's Baptist Church, and she has her own production company, TB Productions. And uh, thank you for coming today. How are you doing in this season? Ah, thank you for inviting me. I am doing well, uh, getting adjusted to what I think is going to be possibly our new normal, but hanging in there and getting through it. <laughs> well, you, we were just talking about church because I miss church and she's on staff at a church and she said they're still doing it all virtual. Um, how are you staying connection, connected with, because we know the church is, is the people, it's not the building. Right, right. How are you keeping people connected? So um, it's been really challenging uh, during this time. So we're just really trying to think of innovative ways to stay connected with our membership. So honestly, our pastor challenged us. He said, hey, guys, let's just throw things at the wall and see what sticks and go. so we've tried some of everything right now we have a new portion that we're doing um so before the five minute you know everybody's doing like a five minute countdown to get you ready for service yeah. and our pastor said hey try something i want to do something different think of something different so we decided to get uh some pastors and some other members and what they do is they come into my office on Sundays and Wednesdays and five minutes before they talk to our audience. So live, they're seeing your name pop up and they're like, good morning, Miss Karen, or good morning, you know, Judy, how are you today? So <laughs> just trying to find a way for it to feel in person. Is, that's the one thing that we lost um, during COVID yeah. was our fellowship time. You know, yeah. right before we would fellowship together, you know, everybody go greet your neighbor. So that's our virtual way of adding that back. And another key component, I think, during this time are growth groups or life groups, yeah. uh, people that are like minded doing life together. Uh, I'm a life group leader, <laughs> so I have my own group and I can tell the difference from when we could meet in person and now we're having to do it virtual. You can see that. Uh, that's the one thing that we're lacking is that in-person connection. So just trying to think of ways we could go outside and meet for that day so that we can be together. We started doing group walks. 
So we're outdoors. We can safely stay six feet apart and still fellowship together. So just oh, really idea. trying to keep everybody connected virtually. And if there's things we can do in person safely, uh, we're trying to do that as well. That is awesome. It is it is difficult times right now. My mom's watching. Hi, mom. Shout out to you. Uh, Annie Allen and Marsha Brown are here with us. I know they're friends of yours. That's my mom. Marsha is my mom. mom. Hey, mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool that our moms could share in our friendship. Yes. <laughs> If it weren't for moms, we might have nobody cheering us on, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so we were going to talk about questioning your faith. Um, I know there probably have been times in your past when you have done that. There may be people that are doing it now. I've had a couple of times. I'm 63. So I've had a couple of times where I've seriously questioned because of I just felt like God had disappeared. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you learn that you get through them and that God never left you. But the first thing is, you know, if you if you your first point that we wanted to talk about is just because we question our faith, does that impact our relationship with Jesus Christ? Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, questioning your faith is I honestly feel like it's healthy. Uh, I feel like when you choose to believe in something and you don't question it, you just kind of blindly follow. To me, that's more like a cult. <laughs> you know, you just kind of blindly following. And and I think it's healthy for us to question our faith because a lot of times that brings us closer to Christ. Um, I don't think that's a time where you should disconnect yourself. This is really a time to go deeper and dive deeper into the word and really ask God to reveal things to you. And I think if you do that, you know, with a, with your heart open and your mind open, that God will reveal himself, you know, the, the Bible says that not can you shall answer, you know? So yeah. uh, I think if you, if you really seek God and, and search him, he will reveal himself to you. But I just think you have to have an open heart and a hope in mind when you do it. Absolutely. Well, one of the times when I, was for having a real um, deep question of my faith. Um, literally, Roger and I have never been ones that pray with one another like some couples do. Um, mm -hmm. It was very separate for us, but literally Roger would, we'd get in bed and Roger would say, um, do you want to pray? And I said, and I'd start crying. And I said, I can't pray right now. I just can't pray. Yeah. And he would take my hand and he would pray for us aloud. Yeah. We've never done that. And so yeah. it was, um, he carried me during that time to keep me close to, to God. And awesome. uh, it changed, um, it brought me out of a deep despair right. into a new faith. I'm sorry. That's okay. You got to bob out once in a while. <laughs> I'm, I'm, at, I'm at work. Sorry, guys. I forgot to put my phone on. Do not disturb. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, and I, I do believe that the, the, a really big part of when you're questioning your faith is mm -hmm. staying connected with um, the word. Um, Absolutely. With, and with people of, of uh, faith that um, can help you walk through that because if it had been for Roger, I might have left the faith entirely. Right. And I think, you know, we have, that's why community is so important because you have people to hold you up and to do this with you. Um, I ran, and then we have to be careful too as Christians uh, when we find out someone is questioning their faith, how we respond. Uh, I had a young lady, uh, we were hanging out my apartment complex. I used to live at Bowman Point. And so they had this thing called Turn Up Tuesday. So everybody would kind of go and hang out. Of course, this is pre-COVID. <laughs> right. And we were sitting and we were getting to know, you would always, new people would come. And I got to know some folks that were living there and some of their friends. And this young lady, we were talking about what we do for a living. And I said, I work at a church. And so she just kind of was like, and I was like, well, you know, what is that face about? And she was like, well, honestly, I've been questioning. You know, it was like a low, I've been questioning my faith. And I was like, that's okay. 
And she was like, oh my God, I literally want to cry right now because nobody's ever responded to me like that. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time there was a lot of condemnation that came with her, you know, questioning her faith. People like, you're questioning your faith? What is wrong? You know, and so she never had anybody just accept that and let her know, like, we all have a process. And ev everybody goes through this where at some point in time, they wonder, you know, God, are you real? God, are you there for me? And I think that's totally fine. And so uh, I built a relationship with her and we sang, we had lunch and, you know, she was just like, well, how do you know? Like, how are you for certain that this is real? And, you know, I just had to let her know there were things in my life that I knew were God. There were even things that were bad that happened. Once I got to a certain point in my life, I realized that was God just ordering things and putting them in order because something that may have hurt a little bit here would have hurt a whole lot worse if I was still in a certain situation that he didn't take me out of. So oh. even in the sad and negative times, you know, you just really have to lean into God and find out like, you know, God, what is it that I'm supposed to be learning in this moment and in this time, and especially during this pandemic? I mean, we have more time than we've ever had. And I realized for myself, I always put the work before I put God, you know? So I thought because I was working at a church, that was my, you know, I'm a good Christian. I'm working at the church. I'm doing the Lord's work, you know, <laughs> but I started to realize, well, God revealed to me that, <clears throat> yeah, you're doing the work, but what about my relationship with you? And mm -hmm. I was putting the work before my relationship with him. And I really had to find time to um, put in time to spend with God. And during COVID, I've been able to actually do that because I don't feel as rushed to get things done and, you know, trying to be here, trying to be there. I have more time and this is a great time to really lean into God and find out, you know, what it is that he wants you to know. What's your purpose? You know, God, why are we going through this? Why am I here? This is a really great time where all the distractions are gone. You know, mm -hmm. you, you always have excuses. Like I have to do this. I will. We don't have, nobody has anything to do. <laughs> Well, so, I do feel like it slowed down. My life has slowed did. down a little bit. Yes. I'm still busy, but it's a slower pace. Right. It's just different. It's right. a little bit different. And and honestly, the excuses that I had before, I don't I don't have those anymore, really. <laughs> so then I had to look at myself and say, okay, no, nah, it's you. <laughs> you know, yeah. you're making up excuses on why you can't spend time and and that's what it's really all about it's about the relationship you know right. it's not about our deeds it's not about doing good and all it's about the relationship and i think that's what a lot of us are missing and that's why we can feel so distant and disconnected is because we have to have relationship well and if for those of you that are listening now either live or on replay how do you stay connected with god it, and each of us has our preferred way that we do that. Some people are reading the word. Some people are praying. Some people are meditating. Some people like to do it through worship music. Let mm -hmm. us know how you like to stay connected. Drop a comment for us uh, because we'd like to know because that'll help other people who are questioning their faith draw back in through our testimony. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's big. And I've always been a a big person of prayer and mm -hmm. not just speaking my prayers continually, but stopping to give God the opportunity to speak back to me during that process. Yes. And I just love praying, but I've got a friend that does it entirely through worship music is she is, falls into worship. Um, she's yeah. connected to God instantly. That's good. How about for you, Tiffany. So for me, I find it in, in multiple ways. So uh, I like to start off with a little bit of worship just to get my heart and my mind ready and settled. I use the Bible app. They yeah. have uh, stories now, which is something that came about during COVID. Um, so they have these stories that you can look at every day. And there's like a little two minute word before and then they connect you with the devotional. I also like to use our daily bread and um also in the Bible app, they have a lot of uh, devotions you can choose from. 
which yeah, is plenty. really cool. And a lot of people don't know about it. You can literally pick your emotion, what you're feeling in that moment. If you're feeling like I'm disconnected with God, you can type in not feeling God and they have a devotional that's, that's ready, great. you know, to help you. And I think during this time, it's been it's it's really interesting because for Christians, this is this is a prime time because people are consuming uh, Christ and everything through the internet. And so when this first started, it was really difficult for pastors and church leaders because it's just like, there's nobody around. But one thing I had to have a lot of friends that are pastors, I'm like, hey guys, you have to understand that right now you have a greater reach than ever because right. people can go to church anywhere now. I can go to church in Africa if I want to right now because mm -hmm. everybody's virtual. So this is a great opportunity to reach more people. And, you know, even uh, TikTok has, there's a Christian yeah. TikTok, you know, like if you search Christian, and they have a lot of pointers on how to stay connected with God. And so it's just, it's just a new wave of things. And I think there's so much information out there for you to have and to really find out and seek and understand what it is that God is doing in this time for you and what it is that you should be gaining from this time. Right. Well, and it, it is true. Um, everyone is sharing their faith on Facebook and on social media right now because they're sharing the videos their churches are doing. They're yeah. sharing their pastor's words and stuff. And um, I, I've seen more local pastors since we haven't been to church. Right. And I feel like it's more of a one body of Christ. It than is we've ever been. Yes. And so even, even for me, I have a lot of, I've actually turned into kind of a consultant <laughs> with churches uh, because everybody's trying to figure out what to do at this moment. There were some churches that were not streaming, you know, and they, they, they had to push themselves to get with the times. And so it's really been cool because it's not about, this church and that church and we're all one kingdom and we're one body. Mm -hmm. And I'm so open to sharing what we are doing to help someone else's ministry. Like it's not a competition. There's enough unbelievers and unsaved people in this world that we all, that's the, that's the ultimate goal is that we're, you know, trying to reach the unsaved. And I, and I just really feel like this is a great, time for churches and Christians to come together and support one another. Uh, our community is virtual now. Yeah. Well, so and, we and there's, a lot of people, there's a lot of people that need hope right now. Yes. Um, from their, they're sick or they have family members that sick. Um, I have a cousin who lost her husband over the weekend um, from COVID and she's burying him today and she needs hope. Um, so this is definitely uh, a place that we who are supposed to be light to the world need Absolutely. to step up and be the light and the hope that in the peace that people need. So if, if somebody's questioning their faith right now and they're watching this, what would you say to them, Tiffany? Put me on the spot. <laughs> I know. No, it's fine. I would honestly say this is a great time. I think I've, I've said it before uh, to just really lean in and um, spend quiet time with God. Um, you said something really important. You said after you pray, you leave time for God to speak back to you. And that was something that I had to learn. Uh, a lot of times I would pray and then you know, go on by my business, but you do have to open up the door and leave time for God uh, to speak to you. And I also feel like community is extremely important right now, uh, especially for those who are grieving. Uh, I know they're losing loved ones that they can't see before they lose them, but having a support system of brothers and sisters in Christ is really important because it they hold you accountable and they're there to lift you up and hold you up. There's a Bible story and I don't want to butcher it, but um, <laughs> I think it was Moses. They were holding the stake and then they had to have, I think it was Aaron that came and held his arm up to keep him through. Please don't judge me if I got those names wrong. But my point is we need each other. 
uh, we're built to be together. We're built for community and you can't get through this time or any time in life in isolation and alone. You need other believers. You need other people to be with you and you need to build your relationship with Christ. It's all about that personal relationship that you have with Christ. Well, and and God has told us that he is the, uh, the great comforter. Right. So in this time where we need comfort, um, if you haven't yet turned to God, just tell him, I need comfort. Um, He also gives us peace that passes all understanding. Absolutely. So if you need peace, just stop. And you don't even have to close your eyes. Um, I was raised that you kneeled down beside your bed, and it was a real big thing every time before we went to bed. But but. You can stop just right where you are and you look up in the sky or you just say into the atmosphere, God, I need that peace you're offering that passes mm-hmm. all understanding because he will give it. He He will, if you ask for it, he will give it to you. He will. And you have to believe that. I think that is what is a, really a big part. You have to believe what it is that you're asking God for. And I think he's a generous God, you know, so he (laughs) gives us what we need freely. Like he wants to give us this. He wants to give you what you need. And I think if, uh, excuse me, if you just believe and open up your heart to receive that, he'll give it to you. Yes. And um, because he is our, he provides us with this peace and hope and love and joy that even in the midst of this pandemic, good things have come from it. Um, early on when my mother has been in, is in Springfield, Missouri, I was telling Tiffany earlier, I haven't been able to see her since January. And, um, she and I have talked regularly on the phone and probably have a deeper understanding of one another as we've built our relationship through the telephone and through messaging than we had even before that, since I've been away from her. Yeah. So, and you're back home with your mama. Yeah, I'm back at home. And so uh, I'm spending a whole lot more time <laughs> with my parents than I was uh, before. But it, it has been. And now that I'm not working as much, I am home a little bit more. Um, so it's, it's a great time to reconnect with those that you kind of got distant from. Uh, well, Tiffany, been- I want to put you on the spot. Okay. I would like to stop and pray for a moment. Okay. And I know this may be outside your comfort zone. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I want us to pray for everyone that watches this, okay. that God touches them. So um, you want to start the prayer? We're not going to close our eyes. We're just going to talk. Okay. So you want to start and I'll wrap it up. And that's All right. That'll work. Show. We'll do it. We'll do it. Okay. All right. Um Dear Heavenly Father, uh, I come to you today. Thank you, Lord, for every person that is viewing now and that will view this later, Lord. Um, I ask you, Lord, to reveal yourself to your people. Uh, This year has been a struggle, God, and, you know, we're having to lean into you more than ever, I'm sure. Um, I pray, Lord God, that if there's anyone that needs to hear from you, that needs to understand you, that you will make it clear and you will make it plain. I pray that those who are looking for their purpose in you, Lord God, I pray that you would reveal that to them during this time um, and that you would just be clear. And for those who need comforting, Lord, uh, I pray that you would comfort them. Uh, Those who are losing loved ones, Lord God, you are the ultimate comforter. And I pray that you will give them a peace, as your word says, that surpasses all understanding and understand that everything works together for the good of those who are called according to your purpose, Lord. So just protect all of us. Keep us safe, Lord. Um, Bring our country back in order, Lord God. Uh, Bring us back together uh, as one community. Yes. Yes. Father, I ask that you would cause us to be salt and light that this world needs right now, that uh, wherever we are, that we would be light on a hill that could not be hidden, that we, that when people meet us, they would feel Jesus's love and they would feel 
um, comfort and peace. Uh, all that let us be your hands and feet in this world, God. And right now, I just pray for a shield of safety over all the people that are watching. Not so we can go <laughs> and <laughs> we shouldn't do, <laughs> but that we don't have to fear God. I just rebuke fear and uh, declare God's um, care over all of us. And we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus name. In Jesus Amen. name. Yes. Amen. Girl, thank you for joining me today. Thank this you for having me. Such a perfect way to go into Thanksgiving, a time yeah. where uh, normally we gather and we have lots of community. But being here today, I hope it gave people that warm experience that they'll go into Thanksgiving um, ex ex not only with joy, but expecting God's care. Amen. So, thank you for being here. I'm going to be back next Monday. And okay. next Monday's guest is J. Ted Lewis with Garlene's Gardens by Floral Express. And he's going to be helping us see how to make our um, Halloween centerpiece. Okay. <laughs> That's going to be great. Um, thank you guys for joining us today. If you watch this on replay, drop a hashtag replay and let us know um, how you're feeling about all that's going on. We appreciate you guys coming. And for now, I know Tiffany, you and I want to travel. So we're going to say ciao for now. Ciao for now. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Bye.